AI is coming to every part of your iPhone. Get ready. AI is heating up all over the place, but one company you don't really hear about in regards to AI is Apple, and that's soon going to change. Coming up at WWDC, it's rumored that Apple is going to finally release some Apple AI, and it's going to be substantial and cover every part of this system. So they're already expecting iOS 18 to be the most substantial update they've ever done, but then it's going to have deep integration with AI. And the source for this is coming directly from Tim Cook, who talked about it on a recent shareholder meeting. It is funny that we're getting comments now from Tim Cook, like an almost Elon Musk comment, that... It is not done. We haven't heard anything about it. There's nothing they can show us yet. He's saying it's going to be great. Yeah, it's probably just to keep people on their toes and say, hey, we're I know we're kind of late to the party, but it's coming. Pro we promise. I think that's smart, though, because a lot of the times if you just wait until it comes out, you're going to have those headlines about you being behind on AI for the next six months that could do horrors to your stock price. Yeah. And so they have the Apple Vision launch and then they're also hitting at the same time like, oh, we're also working on AI that's coming later this year. Well, I'm excited about the AI. Yeah, Tim Cook said, quote, as we look ahead, we will continue to invest in these and other technologies that will shape the future. That includes artificial intelligence, where we continue to spend a tremendous amount of time and effort, and we're excited to share the details of our ongoing work in that space later this year. So technically, that doesn't confirm WWDC, but it seems extremely likely since that's in June. But hints have already shown up in iOS 17.4 code, showing that they're actually working on their own large language model that they're referring to as Ajax, and they're also testing things like chat gpt ajax is a weird name definitely <laughs> it just reminds me of the uh the cleaning product yeah for sinks uh yeah in america we have a cleaning product here that's just like a powdery thing that you use to clean your sinks i wonder i'm trying to draw the analogy maybe that's their vision it's like cleaning <laughs> cleaning, cleaning something but uh, yeah, essentially, the industry has been heating up here. You have ChatGPT from OpenAI, but Microsoft's getting super into AI. Google is getting super into it. So Apple needs to respond here. But also along with this is supposedly a Siri 2.0. I can't wait for that. Siri is such a wasted talent right now because there's so many things it should be able to do. It does work with Apple products. Well, if you say Take Me Home, something with Apple Music, there's like really great things it does. If it could just be that much better or work with things outside the Apple ecosystem, or maybe Apple can bring things into the Apple ecosystem that they haven't had yet that would be helpful that you can use Siri for, I would be really excited about that. Yeah, I think a lot of users like myself need some kind of like relaunch of it too, just for them to say like, hey, it's actually good now because I used Siri and have used it a lot and I have home pods and stuff and it's just the reliability and the amount of time it's just like sorry couldn't help you're just kind of scarred so they need to say like hey here it is for real so that you can really try it again so do you use any AI features right now from chat GPT or things like that there's a chat GPT keyboard you can install onto your phone there's a lot of features like that right. that you can build AI into your workflow, into your mm -hmm. mail workflow. Have you added any of those things and why or why not? No, I just think I haven't dove into it really. I've only really used chat GPT like on the website directly. I guess the why not is just because it's a thing to learn, but I'm not against it or anything. I jumped way into LLM space and the things you could try to do with it. And every time I tried to use it, it wasn't as good as a human can do it. And every time I tried to use it for something, the information would either be outdated, it would have wrong information. So the fact that it couldn't be current and up to date yeah. with things made it really, really hard to use for specific tasks. And then for things like replying to a text message, it just seemed really trivial. Like, why do I need chat GPT to reply to this text message? Yeah, that actually brings up one of the things they're saying that this is going to deliver is smart replies and messages and then playlist recommendations in Apple Music, both of which seem like, okay, so I'll just get a little better at that. I, I hope there's way more that they're going to show us that's exciting about this. I really want to see the two things come up, which is I want to see someone do the exact same thing that Rabbit's doing on a AAA tech company level. Mm -hmm. So we can actually start seeing large action models instead of just large language models. So you could take that large language model and turn it into doing something on another app. That would be great. Like you tell it to make a playlist of all X songs from this year and it can take all that information and actually do something in apple music yeah. that does that task for you yeah and could do it quick enough to where it's 
worthwhile and not just you could have done it yourself. It would actually be good to see some kind of LLM to visual component in this. So it can look at something and it can tell you about it. So if you're traveling in a city you've never seen before, you see some interesting building, you pointed at it, it can recognize it through Google mm. or some kind of search engine that it has, and it can accomplish telling you something about it. Yeah, and having it built in is like a whole nother level because some of that you could do with like Google Lens or you could have like, if you're pointing it at a plant, you can have an app that's specifically designed to analyze plants. But if you just put your phone into like, I don't know, analysis mode, for the camera that's built in, then anything you're pointing it at, it's able to analyze and figure out and tell you information about, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, even for shopping or pricing sorts of things, like pointed at a monitor, it could tell you the specs, pointed at this speaker or something, it could tell you what it does. There's a ton of use cases for that that mm -hmm. are gonna be pretty profitable or like, where's the lowest price I can find this thing? Yeah. Tons of great, great features that they're just not fully integrated. I'd like to see that. I don't know if this ever is going to happen. I'd like to see that built in with, like you're saying, that, that app that has to recognize a plant. That's mm -hmm. a separate app. Yeah. And if it's not in Apple's ecosystem, then it's not going to talk to that app. Yeah, exactly. And so it's going to be really frustrating if you have all this stuff in it and you don't make all those auxiliary apps that you need to give all this information to us yeah and then obviously that could flow into apple vision so you're just wearing these goggles and you're walking around the world and it's automatically telling you about everything you're seeing and it looks almost as good as the world i think version one of that sounds kind of ridiculous that you'd be walking around outside but in the future when they have a less invasive version of it or a less obvious version of it that could really add up to something great which i'm assuming is their overall goal with all of this it would be great, too, for them to discover very specific use cases for us already because we see things that it can do, and it's very impressive, but how does this help me accomplish something? Or how does this help me have more fun? Or how is this more entertaining? Like, really being able to point my camera at something and it tells me something about it is a huge new feature that opens up the world of, you know, AR or, you know, it turns the world into Pokemon Go or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, like whatever new thing that will come with that kind of technology. But that's a reason to buy an iPhone, whereas, you know, titanium and, you know, the different glass or something like that is becoming or a new processor is becoming less of a reason these days. So you really need to go into software feature mm -hmm. and try to convince people that your phone is going to be super useful in a new and creative way. Yeah. And then they can have a special AI learning chip that is only in the new phone and then bam, people have to buy the new phone if you deliver enough good features like you're talking about. I'm sure just like every Apple event, they'd probably have a lot of great examples of it at WWDC. And then they'd probably have some weird example, like a game that no one actually cares about, but it looks cool. And then it would still be, I don't know, six months at least until that version came out and actually delivered these AI features. So yeah, I'm very curious to see if it's just on the new phone or if they somehow deliver this to everyone yeah that's interesting i almost want it to be bad i want the bad version of this because i feel like these companies are playing it too safe mm -hmm. they're adding these features but like siri is not great you know yeah. and we've had siri for 10 years mm -hmm. so give us a new but not great feature there seems to be too much perfectionism in the space where if it's not perfect and we can't release it, well, then we can't even see into the future and hope for something new. Because right now you're delivering us perfect, boring products that everyone's making almost the same thing. Yeah. I mean, that's how learning works. You have to fail and you have to learn what's wrong and improve from there. And that's what these models are supposed to do. So they can only do so much internal before they put this out to the public which is definitely a shift for Apple. They want everything to pretty much be perfect before it's in someone's hands. So that will be very interesting to see. And then it gives us something to hope for because just like full self-driving, you know, every time they have an update, it's kind of exciting because you could see like, what did they fix? Did this actually get better? And so it'll give us a reason to want to update our phones. It'll give us a reason to want to update to the next software. Yeah, you can be experimenting with this and like, oh, it's not doing this super well. And then you get an update and it says it fixes that issue. And it's like, oh, wow, I'll actually use this now. I'll use Siri 2.0. Yeah, it seems like it's a great spirit of competition. All these companies are working with large language models. And if someone can release a really great feature, it'll be the first time in a long time to give you a real reason if it's Apple or not to switch over to another phone. Could you imagine if Google with all their search capability 
comes out with that first thing on the Pixel before anyone else. That would be interesting. You still have all the people in the Apple ecosystem, and it's going to take a lot for them to switch. Yeah, that's why Apple needs to join in right here, and that's why they're doing this. Because at a certain point, if you're looking at the competition, even though it requires this switch, but it has all of these features, you're going to switch. Yeah, definitely. I would, or I at least try the phone. You know, I'd get a Pixel and, you know, tether it to my iPhone probably <laughs> so I can stay in the, uh, the blue text. But... Uh, the really, it's really getting competitive again, and I like this. You know, it's a good place to be. Now you really have to be more messy and deliver something that's not fully complete, like the Apple Vision Pro. Like it's not done, it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but it's the best thing out there. Yeah. And so, give me the best thing out there, even if it's not done and it's not perfect, and then it'll force the other companies to get better and give us the best their version is. Yeah. I'm also really curious to see how Apple handles security and privacy here. You know, they've gone so far in on apps saying, ask this app not to track, ask all these things. But if they're trying to build AI into the base foundation of their software, to a certain degree, that's going to have to use your data and be sharing it. So it's going to be tracking you. And what level of that are they going to be able to successfully train this thing while also keeping customers happy that their privacy is being protected? Yeah, that is interesting. I wonder how people will want to share those things. I've heard people talk about everyone having their own individual AIs that's tagged to them. And so only the only thing that's getting trained is their model. Mm -hmm. So it might be something like that. It might be something that they need those data points. It's it's hard to tell right now. Yeah, but they obviously have an advantage with just the sheer number of iPhone users out there that if they release this and Apple, I think, has a really high percentage of people that download the new version of software, tons of people are going to have it right away and it's going to be able to start training on a pretty big scale. Yeah, and I think we see these things on the Samsung phones as well. So hopefully Apple's is just better and we can see actual use cases for these because right now, with what we've had, we sort of have this available already mm -hmm. and I'm not using it and you're not using it. And we love learning new things and uh, trying these things out. So they really have to make it useful uh, across the board or else it's just not going to get adopted and feel like another gimmick. Yeah, they have to show to the average customer why they would want AI features, not just early adopters that are excited about AI. This new feature should be announced in June at WWDC. Uh, still a pretty long ways away, but I'm excited. Definitely, me too.